All right, today, or at least in this uh, video, we are going to be talking about voltage. You've probably seen, um, as, as you've walked around or as when you were a kid, you know, signs that say danger high voltage. Maybe they're on a transformer uh, box, one of those like gray or green boxes that's just studying the landscape every couple of blocks. Um, those boxes obviously you're not supposed to open because the voltage is so high that it can be harmful. Now, we haven't talked about electrical flow yet, and we will later in, a, in the second or in a, the ending of chapter one. But when we talk voltage, one volt is equal to one joule. You might remember that's a measurement of energy divided by one coulomb, which is a measurement of how many electrons are on something. So what it really means is the amount of energy that you've put into some electrons divided by how many electrons we moved. So back in Science 10 and also in Science 20, we talked about potential energy. And it's the energy that an object has based on its position. So for example, um, you pick something up and raise it above your head, you are putting potential energy into that object. Why? Because you're changing its position. You're moving the object against gravity. So remember, that object would rather be on the ground. But when you pick it up and you lift it up into the air, you're moving it away from where it wants to be. As soon as you let that object go, it's going to plummet back down and slam on the ground. So you can put energy into objects. Human beings can lift stuff. That's, that's a given. What I want to tell you, though, is we can put energy into other stuff, too. Yes, we can put energy into electrons. That's how electricity works. That's how batteries work. For those of you who took Science 20, and I know it wasn't a ton of you, we talked about the electrical uh, or electrochemistry. We talked about the fact that if we have uh, certain elements in a solution, electrons want to go from one place to another. And how bad they want to go is voltage. So in your cell phone or in your laptop you have or in your iPad you've got um, a certain kind of battery. It's called a lithium ion or lithium polymer battery. And they contain a couple kinds of chemicals. One of them is an element called lithium. And lithium wants to get rid of its electrons. At the same time there's another substance in there, a certain ion or a certain polymer, that wants to take those electrons. So the electrons go from the electron giver to the electron taker. How badly they want to go from one place to another is voltage. So all we need to do is find and get the energy amount, the joules number, the J and divide by the Coulomb's number. That's going to give you your volts. So these are very simple questions. I'll show you the simple ones and then one where there's one layer of abstraction where you have to solve something before that, which is really not hard.
Okay, so this is the kind of question that you may see. What is the voltage <clears throat> if I put 25,000 joules into 1.98 coulombs of electrons? Okay, so it's a very simple formula. Voltage equals J, the joules number, divided by C, the coulombs number. So <clears throat> the way we were doing it in physics before, oh, sorry, there's one other way that we can show this. Um, and that is EP, which is potential energy, divided by Q, which is the charge. These mean the same thing, but in a formula, EP and Q are the formula. Joules and coulombs are the units. So that means my EP is 25,000 joules. And my... Q, my charge, is 1.98 coulombs. So quite simply, we're going to put our joules number on top. We're going to get our coulombs number on the bottom. We do the division. Whatever number that is, that's the amount of uh, voltage. So we get, and we have, let's see, three sig digs to work with. Here's the actual number, 126.26, and that's volts. Since we only have three significant digits, remember, you guys have to be improving on sig digs. Three sig digs means I have one sig dig, two sig digs, three sig digs. I check to the right. I don't have to round up because this is a 2. We only round up on a 5 and above. So that means that this is 1.26 times 10 to the something volts. How do we find out what the something is? Very easily. We take wherever we put the decimal in our answer, we put it here and we walk it to where it actually is. One, two, three, four. Big numbers are always going to have positive exponents in scientific notation. Tiny, tiny, tiny numbers are always going to have negative exponents in scientific notation. So, what happens if we've got a slightly different question like this? So how much energy was expended in order to move 0 0.0036 coulombs to a charge of 2400 volts? So this time, we're going to write down our formula. So V equals EP divided by Q. And we're trying to find energy. That means we want to get EP all alone. So we look here and we do our little diagnosis. We figure out what we need to do with this question. I need to multiply both sides of this equation, pardon me, by Q. Why is that? Well, we cancel out Q on that side. It's moved to the other side. So we have Q V equals E P, energy potential. So we got the energy all by itself. Remember, that's the, whole f that's the fundamental of these questions, is you want to be, ab be able to get a particular number all alone, so that when we solve it, we have the answer on one side. And it's always, always, always better to do it before you start plugging numbers in. For us in a remote learning context, it's not quite as bad, but 
But what happens if I had like really, really long numbers? Not necessarily big, but just long numbers with a ton of decimals in both of these. If you plug the numbers in and then try to move them around, you're in for a world of hurt because it's going to take forever. You're going to copy those numbers down 10 times, maybe not 10, but a couple times. It's easier to just move the letters around. They're smaller, they're tiny. And then we fill it in with the numbers. So Q times V equals EP. So this is obviously my voltage because it has a V. This is my Q because it's a Coulomb. So I'm going to say 0 0.00. .00 three, six coulombs multiplied by twenty four hundred volts. And I'm going to write volts as J over C. So J over why am I allowed to do that? Because one volt is one joule per coulomb. And it makes it easier for us because that means I can cross out those. And I know that my answer is going to be in joules, which is the point because how do we measure energy? We measure it in joules. So quick little bit of math, 0 0.0036 times 2400. We get 8.64 joules. My only issue is I only have two sig digs, so I'm going to have to burn one of those sig digs off or one of those digits. So not 8.64. We are going to get 8.6 joules. And that's our answer. So 8.6 joules. Last example that I'm going to give you today for these. And I'm going to start throwing electrons in here. So I'm going to say 5.33 uh, times 10 to the power of, I don't know, 11. So 5.33 times 10 to the 11 electrons are raised to a voltage of 43.5 volts. And then calculate the amount of energy needed. So in this question, we, uh, we hit a roadblock instantly, right? We take a look at this, and we've got electrons, not coulombs. But my formula, this guy, V equals EP over Q, that formula doesn't have electrons in it. It's got coulombs. So I need to turn this into coulombs first. So again, remember, you can't just throw like numbers in and pray that it works. Yes, students who don't know what they're doing, they try that all the time. You give them a couple numbers, and they'll just be like, uh, I'm just going to put in a formula and see if it works. You don't have to do that. All you have to do is know what you're doing. And so in this case, we have electrons. We need to turn it into coulombs first. So I'm going to do that conversion. There's my electrons. I'm going to turn that into coulombs. And I know it's going to be in the unit of coulombs. So I have one coulomb and that's 6.25 from the other video. 6.25 times 10 to the power of 18. So I'm going to do the math here. Oops, and that the unit is electrons, which means that there's electrons canceling out. The only unit that survives this is coulombs. So 5.33 times 10 to the 11 divided by 6.25 times 10 to the 18. I get a number, and I'm not going to do any sig dig magic with it. I'm not going to fiddle with it right now because we're not done the question. Remember, you only 
do sig digs and rounding at the very end of the question. So it's 8.528 times 10 to the minus 8 coulombs. It's not very many coulombs. So even at times 10 to the 11, that's a lot of electrons. Still, not a, not a lot of coulombs. Now we can do our actual question. So EP is what I don't know. Q is a number we do for sure know, because we just calculated it. It's the number of coulombs that are here. And then our voltage was 43.5 volts. So our formula, remember, voltage equals EP divided by Q. We're trying to find energy. So that's going to be Q times V equals EP. And now we just plug in our Q and our V. So 8.528 times 10 to the minus 8 coulombs, which again, not very many. That's a small amount of coulombs. Multiplied by 43.5. And I'm going to say that's joules per coulomb. That's just, a, again, a handy way of making it so we can cancel out our little coulombs. So coulombs is history. We know that the answer, because it said calculate the energy, the answer unit should be joules. Always make sure the answer, or what they ask for you to do, calculate the energy. Make sure you understand energy is joules. Make sure you understand the word and the symbol. So I'm just going to quickly multiply this. And we get a very tiny number. We get 3.709 times 10 to the minus 6 joules. Since I only have three significant digits, because this guy has three siggy diggies, so does this, so does that, it will be 3.71. That's just because here's three sig digs. We look at the number after it. That's a 9. We round up. So 3.71 times 10 to the minus 6 joules. So long story short, it doesn't take a lot of energy to move a minuscule, puny number of electrons to 43.5 volts. So next up, we will be talking about fields. So we're going to be talking about the electrical field first. See you then.